Good morning, everyone, or at least good evening to those of you on the other side of the world who are ending your day. And for those of you that are tuning in later in your day, how is everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in. This is morning coffee. So this is going to be a weekend edition. Yes, this is your reading for the weekend of Friday, February 8th through Sunday, February 10th, right? Let's just make sure. Yes. Okay, Eric. All right. You sound point, honey. <laughs> <laughs> being silly. All right, so this is a general energy reading, okay? So take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Um, energies are fluid, so just because this is dated for this weekend, um, it could be an energy that extends past this weekend. It could be something that has already you've already been through, and now you're maybe you're processing it or something like that. Just take it as it resonates. And if nothing really resonates with you, then maybe it's not a message for you. Either way, you know, enjoy sit back enjoy have a good a nice cup of coffee cup of tea if you're if you're watching this later in the day have a nice cocktail who cares just have a good time yeah all right uh just want to remind everybody that i am doing a sale on mirror readings mirror readings are 20 percent off um, if you're not familiar with a mirror reading, like say if you're new to my channel or something, go ahead and check out the Twin Flame weekly readings that I do every week. Um, that is where I do the mirror readings. And the mirror readings actually were developed for the Twin Flame situation, but I've come to realize that the mirror reading is incredibly versatile, okay? It can be literally for anything. So it can be a look into your situation between you and your twin. It could be a look into the situation between the divine masculine and divine feminine energies within you. It could be a look into a situation between a relationship um, between you and a soulmate, uh, especially maybe if you've been in a relationship with someone for some time, or if you just met somebody and you want to get the vibe, it could even be a circumstance like between you and a job or you and I, literally guys, it could be anything. Okay. So go ahead and check that out. If you're interested, those readings are 20% off for the month of February. Yes. Okay. So enough rambling. Let's get into the reading for this weekend. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of Friday, February 8th through Sunday, February 10th. Okay, thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm just gonna give this a few shuffles and we will get into it. I hope everyone's having a good morning. I hope you guys had a good day. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Yes, yes, I hope you guys had a great week. It's Friday, yay, Friday. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for the weekend. Best messages, please, spirit. All right, guys, here we go. Weekend edition, Friday, February 8th, woo, to Sunday, February 10th. Okay, we've got the Ace of Wands so far. Weekend edition. This is something brand new. This could be... Oh. Oh. Okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Seven of Pentacles. And I apologize if you guys can hear that truck outside, but I believe it's a garbage truck. But anyway, it'll pass in a few moments. Seven of Pentacles. So the Seven of Pentacles is the theme right now, okay? Reaping what you've sown. Uh, but all, it's not just about that, okay? That is a, that's like a major thing uh, when it comes to the Seven of Pentacles, but it's not just that. It is, um, uh, 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the words, to, the, the correct words to put this. Because what I'm feeling is more of an energy of someone's really learned something. Um, or what have you learned up until this point is really in focus right now, okay? For some of you, this is, wow, okay, you really get it. You know, you learn through the contrast and the message is very, very clear for you now. You're really understanding it. You're hyper aware of certain things, potentially. Um, and so, because I was doing that, because I want to put this here, because this is all, the, the Ace of Wands is like a, a, a major focus in this reading right now, along with the overall energy of the Seven of Pentacles. It's the overall energy of the Seven of Pentacles in what have you learned thus far that is leading to the inspiration of the Ace of Wands. Now, this Ace of Wands can mean a new creative direction for you, new ice, uh, insight. Um, it does feel somewhat like a, an aha moment or a eureka moment, but it's not necessarily the, the, the same as in the Ace of Swords when it's the, the actual realization. Right now, this is the aha moment or eureka moment that is leading to inspiration, to take a new direction, to move in a new passionate direction okay um so the seven of pentacles here is for us for some of you it is okay you finally have learned the lesson and now you're working you're looking forward you're looking ahead of yourself and you're applying what you have learned to your situation for others of you for others of you this is still a focus here you're still in the process of going through what it is you have learned um in order to make a better decision moving forward you know, for whatever direction you want to move in. Now, the next that came out was the Empress and the Five of Cups here. Okay. There has been a, quite a bit of sorrow, probably, lately. Um, a lot of grieving. A lot of remorse, regret. Uh, but I really feel like those energies are coming to a close in a sense because what i'm really getting in the typical like especially with like the typical way that the five of cups is depicted and it's not like this usually it is someone um upset or mourning or grieving over um the loss symbolized by three spilled cups where they still have two cups behind them and so what i'm getting right now is this is a moment where many of us or many of you are Drying your eyes, okay? You're finally you're being able to maybe catch your breath, we'll say, if you've really been in a very grieving, a grieving mode. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that... That's, that's, that's symbolism. That's symbolism, okay? Being able to finally catch your breath from crying so much and, you know, all that stuff. Um, that's figurative. It doesn't have to be. For the most part, though, it's figurative. You get it. Um, but now either turning around and actually picking up those two cups left over and moving on or literally like in the process of drying your eyes and turning around in order to pick up those cups okay depending on where you are everybody is at a different spot in their journey um, and this is all having to do with the empress here because a lot of what um, this inspiration is with the ace of wands this is like the drive to move forward and it's really because of the abundance around you, uh, recognizing that, you know, rejection is God's protection. You know, we've been saying that a lot. Recognizing that there are maybe plenty of fish in the sea, um, figuratively speaking. Recognizing that there is, the, the universe is abundant with opportunity and, and, um, and, and such. So realizing that you don't have to worry about things that you may have lost or seem to have lost because ultimately there's always more where that came from with the empress here that's basic that's what the empress is symbolizing right now now understand you need to maintain an, an, an energy of gratitude yes um but you know the in, the universe is infinite And, and I really feel like what's going on here is many of us have learned that lesson and are continuing forward in that vein. We have the Page of Cups in reverse. We have the Ten of Cups upright. And then we have one hidden card here. Ooh, 
the two of wands in reverse. Interesting. That is very, very interesting. Okay. So either you or somebody you're connecting with <laughs> does not want to make a decision. The two of wands came out, it was in reverse and it was overturned, like it was face down. So to me, that's somewhat of a hidden card, okay? Um, and uh, to me, that's saying, I guess specifically in this situation, that's saying that somebody just doesn't want to, doesn't want to make a decision, doesn't even want to face a decision. Um, I'm trying to see how to, because this is, <laughs> I'm trying to switch this around to see the best way to, to feel the flow of it, because the way I had it here, it was kind of confusing, but I guess that's the way it needs to go. What I was getting originally with the Page of Cups in reverse, there is no, there, 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 this is coming from two sides here. From one side, it is someone not wanting to apologize, someone not delivering an apology or some sort of apology or reconciliation being blocked because someone can't make a decision. Or conversely, someone has made a decision. This could be you or the other person. Um, they've already decided and they are already in a place where they're happy. Ten of Cups. Now, see, there are many different things that I'm getting with this. Also, for some of you, this could be you actually have found fulfillment within you. And so in essence, your decision would already have been made and you're not really looking for any sort of handout, any sort of gestures. You're not looking for any of that outside of you. You found it within. Now, this is a general reading, guys, so take what resonates, okay? I, we're, I'm definitely going to need to get some clarifiers on this because there are so many different things that are coming out with this one. There is an energy of not wanting to, of not really accepting anything from those who lack a certain amount of maturity also is what I'm getting. Because you yourself have grown into a deeper understanding of what the Ten of Cups is. And you're not really trying to, I don't, I see, it doesn't look right for me putting it that way. It, it feels better this way. But you're not really, someone, either you or someone you're connecting with, is not really trying to, to take any sort of half-assed offers, personally, is what that feels like. not willing to settle because you want the true 10 of cups. So until that's, un, that's really interesting. Cause I just recognized we're going from the ACE to the two. So when I'm getting here for others, for some take whatever resonates, I'm literally just throwing out whatever, what I'm picking up here. If something hits, take it. <laughs> okay. But someone has the ACE. Someone has the inspiration. Someone knows what they want and are not afraid to get it. They're not afraid to wait for it even with the Seven of Pentacles. <laughs> it's, it's funny because um, Pussycat Dolls, when I grow up, just started playing in my head. But it was the, the line, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. But... For some, that, that's a message for some of you out there. Now, somebody has the ace, okay? But 
they're waiting for the right fit to come forward with this two of wands in reverse and the page of cups in reverse because they know they've learned throughout all of whatever the seven of pentacles and the five of cups represents for you somebody has learned what they truly want and desire in love in life in fulfillment in happiness ten of cups now and so because of that they're not you're not willing to settle the other thing that I'm getting here is that you're still in the process of really identifying like now you really just started officially really getting down to what this Ten of Cups truly means for you. What is true fulfillment for you? What is it that you really desire? What is it that you really want out of life, out of a relationship? What is it that you really want in love? And through this contrast between the Seven of Pentacles and the Five of Cups, you're really starting to come to terms with that. So you have the Ace, you've got the torch, you're walking around, moving around, trying to identify illuminating what's around you okay so you may not be ready to make a decision yet but for the biggest for but, but even still you know for a fact that you don't want any half-assed offers with the page of cups in reverse okay okay so getting back to the other scenarios that i was picking up on there are some people out there who are waiting on an apology or expect an apology in some way there is also, on the other side, someone that knows that they want to make some sort of apology. Or they need to. They, have reap, they are reaping what they have sown with the Seven of Pentacles. They have the inspiration here with the Ace of Wands saying, I need to apologize to the Empress because I broke her heart with the Five of Cups. Or, I broke my own heart by doing what it is I did says this person. But with the Ace of Wands and the Empress, they recognize that there is abundance throughout the world. So they're getting over it with the Five of Cups here. They're getting ready to turn around and pick up those two cups and move forward. But see, they recognize, some of them recognize that either way, it would be best to tie up loose ends and just bring closure to the situation. Even if this other person doesn't really accept them back into their lives, they don't want the karma of that situation hanging over their head any longer. So they may actively come forward and apologize. They may be trying to figure out how to reconcile with the two of wands in reverse and the page of cups in reverse. They, this may be a situation where they realize that this 10 of cups energy, this empress that represent that, that's here, this person, if this represents you or someone in your, you're connected with, this Empress is everything to you. Ten of Cups. There are so many different scenarios coming out in this reading. It's really crazy. I think I've covered them, though. Let me give, you, give me just a second. Let me make sure. But yeah, I think I covered them. Lessons have been learned, though. That is the big message here for this reading. Seven of Pentacles, overall energy. Lessons have been learned. Really deep, strong lessons have been learned here. All right. I am going to get some clarification now. Now that song is stuck in my head. Oh well. Was it when I grow up? Yeah. All right, one more shuffle, and then we're gonna start with the first row here. Ace of Wands, Empress, and the Five of Cups. All righty. Best message, please, Spirit. Just some clarification here. Knight of Swords, yeah. Someone definitely wants to communicate here. And if it's not communicate, ooh, chow. If it's not communication, it's an energy of just moving very quickly. We have the Queen of Wands. Okay, confidence. Self, whoops. Belief in the self. I might take those two cards. I'm gonna take them, because they fell out here. Ho, ho, ho. 
Oh, oh, oh. We, <laughs> we have, okay. So the Queen of Wands is underneath the deck. We have the Nine of Wands, which is in reverse, the Knight of Swords, the Seven of Cups, the Seven of Wands, and then two more cards fell out, the Page of Swords and the Two of Pentacles. Okay, so this is definitely an energy of getting out of this wounded warrior energy here, getting out of the struggle, getting out of the perseverance, not fighting any against any of this any longer, okay? And this is actually a big message. What's been going around a lot lately, especially in the planetary sense, um, people have had, there's been an energy of coming to terms with the fact that you don't have to work you don't have to be on the hustle or your grind, whatever, whatever that nonsense is to be successful, to be abundant, to be happy, to, to live, to, sur to, to survive and to thrive. You don't need to do that. That is a common misconception. That is also a common form of mind control. Okay. And many of us are starting to understand that. And that's what this Ace of Wands and the Empress tends to rep represent. The Five of Cups being that energy of regret, fear, remorse that you're not necessarily doing enough. That's bullshit, okay? That Five of Cups energy, however that resonates with you, it being left behind. And so with this Nine of Wands, either you are putting down, you're stopping this, this, this uphill battle because you know it's not worth it either business-wise, financially, or in some sort of relationship with someone, okay? Take it as it resonates, but that translates to anything. Overexerting yourself, being on the grind, being on the hustle, that could, that could resonate with a love situation if you've been in a relationship with someone that you feel like you just have to constantly work overtime for them just to keep them, just to keep them around, just to keep the relationship going, just to keep them happy, bullshit. Nine of Wands in reverse. Let that go. Dropping that down. Dropping it down. You have the Knight of Swords. So you're either communicating with people about this, people around you. You're speaking your peace. You're speaking your truth. Um, you're being direct and blunt and very, very honest. Or you're just ready to move forward. And pretty quickly, too. Okay, you have the Seven of Wands and the Seven of Swords. Two sevens here. Luck, wisdom, spiritual wisdom are what sevens represent. And there's a lot of, there's probably a lot of illusion around you, probably a lot of options around you, but uh, boundaries have been, put in, have been put in place. And I feel like for some of you, very fairly recently, there may have been a situation in which firmer boundaries have been put into place even firmer than, you know, they may have been with when you started, I guess. I don't know what that means, but take it as it, again, take it as it resonates. There's probably a lot of option around you, probably a lot of illusion around you, probably a lot that's trying to distract you from who you know yourself to be now with this Queen of Wands. This is the energy of magnetism, of attraction, of allowing something to come to you, knowing full well in your own confidence, believing in yourself, being social, like a social butterfly, beauty, beauty, beautiful, wise, independent, strong, has been through some shit, doesn't need anyone else around her or him in order to, to, to be strong and do what they need to do, stands on their own. confident and then and then you have these last two cards that fell out which I believe is a different person here so if you are not this queen of wands going through this energy here the nine of wands in reverse the knight of swords seven of cups seven of wands you're this person page of swords and two of pentacles so while this person over here is doing their thing stepping up their game, basically ascending 
to a, to a higher dimension, a higher reality, a higher vibrational rate, higher vibrational rate or a higher vibrational reality, you're here, this other person, watching, juggling, staying in the game that many of us are working on coming out of. The Two of Pentacles, it's interesting. I've never seen it this way because the Two of Pentacles lately has been talking about being in between worlds, but here, or in between realities. But here, this person is staying. The Two of Pentacles is representing you. It's seeing, I'm seeing this as you juggling, but juggling in the sense of continuing to play the game of the Matrix. Now, there are some people that have been saying re lately that, you know, we are the Matrix, you are the Matrix. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. You are the Matrix. We are the Matrix. But it's really a matter of how you want to play this game in the Matrix. Do you want to continue with the old programming? Or do you want to move forward and work on living the new programming? What is the new programming, you may ask? It's anything you want it to be. Remember, you are the matrix. So what do you want your program to look like, feel like? How do you want to experience it? But this other person here with this page of swords and the two of pentacles, it's like they're watching this person move on, watching them ascend, and almost like... Well, look, this is on the Five of Cups here. So I guess that's pretty self-explanatory, huh? Regret, remorse, shame, guilt, fear even, anxiety. It might be a pretty humbling moment, actually, is what I'm picking up on. Because I just heard someone saying, how do you get to do that? And I don't. Well... Maybe you should get off your high horse. Maybe you should look yourself in the mirror and realize you're no different from anybody else. Maybe you should humble yourself a little bit. Just saying. Don't shoot the messenger, guys. Okay, so now let's get into this bottom row. Page of Cups in reverse, Two of Wands in reverse, the Ten of Cups. There were so many different things that came out there. I can't, I'm not even going to try and recap. So let's just get this clarification and we'll talk about it from there. The Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Six of Cups. Soulmate. All right. The past is mostly what I'm getting here. Ten of Pentacles. Whoa, the Ten of Swords in reverse and death. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> so we're clarifying the Page of Cups in reverse, the Two of Wands in reverse, and the Ten of Cups upright. And with that, we get the Ten of Pentacles upright, the Ten of Swords in reverse, death, and the Six of Cups. Wow. You guys are going to have to give me a second. Because I need to, I need to, I need to spend a, a minute or two with this <laughs> to channel here. First thing that comes to mind is that if this Ten of Swords energy here being in reverse, not only is the situation done, but literally someone really is finally walking away from it completely releasing the situation now. Like you went through the whole completion period. Well, for some of you, for some of you. I'm gonna continue with that thread though. You've gone through the completion period and um, you've gone through a major transformation with death and that transformation comes in the form of understanding what is truly going to make you happy you really have transformed here so what's truly going to make you happy ten of cups ten of pentacles you realize with this ten of pentacles you understand 
that a situation is not necessarily just going to happen overnight. It's entirely possible, but you still have to put the energy and effort into it, regardless if those feelings happen overnight. Okay, you, I mean, yes, you could meet someone tomorrow, fall madly in love with them, but if the, the, the follow through, which is what this 10 of pentacles represents, if the follow through is not there, then it's not gonna work, no matter how much you feel, how deeply you feel for this person. And that is a big lesson that has been learned here. So this is why, with the Seven of Pentacles, so this is why we ain't taking no half-assed offers, Page of Cups in reverse. Yes, it can start out small, but it needs to continue. Ten of Pentacles, you have to follow through. Put in the time, the energy, the effort. Now, for others of you... Wow. For others of you, what I'm getting here is that you, someone, either you or someone you're connecting with, may be really resisting a completion of something because of materialism with the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Swords reversed. The reversals can either be a release or it can be a blockage. And here, well, I'm getting both. I'm getting two, I'm getting scenarios. So I'm telling you the scenarios and I'm getting the first scenario. It's a release. The completion has happened. It's over, it's done, the lessons have been learned, we're moving on to something brand new now. But for others of you, it's either you or somebody that you're connected with that is resisting this 10 of swords, does not want to bring whatever circumstance they're in to an end, mainly because it has a lot to do with money or status. They're resisting some sort of transformation. Or, they are resisting the, 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 they're, they're resisting the ending of this Ten of Swords, whatever this represents. And Ten of Swords is very difficult situations, tumultuous situations. The Swords is the suit of the mind, okay? And the thoughts. So whatever this situation, whatever this represents, and ten, the, the sword's suit all in all is very, is very rough, very tumultuous, okay? Um, by the time you get to the ten, you know, you've been through the ringer. Often what's said is the ten of swords means that the worst it has is behind you. But so this person, either you or someone that you're connecting with, does not want to bring whatever situation to an end most likely in the form of, for the reasons of money, status, complacency even with the Ten of Pentacles here. And so there is a transformation happening. But I think it's more of a transformation of someone leaving their life or some sort of opportunity flying away. And it's a transformation, yes, but you're, this person is staying in that same energy. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm looking at this Six of Cups here. Yes, for some of you, you've been dealing with a soulmate. For some of you, a soulmate will be coming into your life. Someone that matches this Ten of Cups for you. Someone that's willing to put in the time and the effort because they've gone through the ringer too. The big, I do want to say that the biggest thing that I'm getting with this Ten of Swords in reverse and death for the most part is the release of a really awful situation. Like you've got, you've, we've been in some, a bit of a, a completion energy for a while. The Ten of Swords has been coming out every once in a while just to represent that, you know, the worst was yet, was left, was behind you. But then the Ten represents completion 
So what that was saying to me is we were in the process of wrapping it up. Even though the worst was behind you, there were still some things that may have been coming up um, that needed to that were needed to wrap to help wrap the situation up, right? Bring it to completion. And so now with the Ten of Swords in reverse, the strongest that I'm getting for the majority of whoever's resonating with this reading, the completion is over, and now the transformation has either happened or literally like at, as we speak, you are in the process of transforming energetically. I'm not saying that you're morphing into some <laughs> newly shaped being, but like energetically you're transforming. It probably has a lot to do with your thoughts. So think, look at um, your thoughts and your beliefs around about you and about the surrounding world around you and see how that compares to what it was, used to be in the past. And there you'll most likely see where your transformation lies. But for the Six of Cups here, this has everything. Yes, it could be about a soulmate. And like I said, yes, a soulmate could be coming into your life fairly soon. That mirrors this Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups energy that you're looking for. But the biggest thing that this is talking about is just the past. What's gone on in the past. Okay. All right. Oracle guidance time. We're going to start with the animal spirit deck here. And yeah, I'm just going to get some clarification here. Well, not clarification. I say that all the time. It's Oracle guidance here. So from the animal spirits, best messages moving forward for this weekend for this message. Yes. Thank you so much, spirit. Best message, please. Best message, please. There we go. Oh, otter. Yes. Ooh. Okay, underneath the deck is Octopus. But this is an energy that I really feel like we're leaving behind at the moment. Octopus talks about not having strong boundaries. Um, you know, oversharing, maybe. Um, basically... Uh, it's like... Well, having well-intended but messy relationships because of a lack of boundaries and that kind of thing. But that's what's, boop, seven of wands, seven of cups, boundaries, releasing yourself from the illusion, the distraction, keeping all of that at bay. There is a good amount of defensive energy between the seven of wands and the knight of swords, okay? But here you have otter. And otter is all about playing, having fun, enjoying yourself. And that absolutely resonates with this whole thing that we've been going through lately, talking about how you don't need to work like hell. You don't have to be constantly on the grind. You don't have to be hustling, hustling, hustling all the time. Enjoy yourself. Take some time for self-care. Otter, unobstructed joy, playfulness, contentment. Perhaps the most joyful creature within the animal spirit deck, the otter represents absolute bliss. Otter energy is the playfulness of a child available to us at any age. They have a giddiness and reverence for life itself without the presence of doubt, worry, or skepticism. Imagine yourself with a little more otter energy. What would life look like? What would it take to bring you there? The otter card begs these questions and wants to transport us to that precious place as soon as possible. The celebration awaits. When in balance, Otter is full of love and needs nothing. When out of balance, Otter is gloomy, sighs, and makes silly excuses. To bring into balance, one can have a dance party or a celebration. That's beautiful. I love that card. And it's so adorable. I mean, look at it. Look, he's so cute. Look at, look at the little Otter. He's so cute. <laughs> okay. So, um... I'm going to get two more oracles here. We're going to start, we're going to go for the Whispers of Love first, and then we're going to close the reading with the Crystal Mandala deck, okay? But um, Spirit wants, has some messages here for some people out there from the Whispers of Love, so. We going to do that, then. Mm-hmm. 
Alrighty. Here we go. Best message, please, Spirit. Hmm? Okay. Oh, and one more. Oh, wow. Okay, that came out yesterday. And it's so funny because as soon as I picked up that deck, uh, uh, picked up this deck, I was like, huh, that, right, that card did come out yesterday. And here it is again. New love. Card number 26. Now, this says, embrace this new opportunity of love that is here. This may pertain to work opportunities or spiritual growth. And the biggest thing that I'm getting for this is spiritual growth. Okay. That's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. And this is, yeah, this has everything to do with love for the self here, okay? You have card number 24, focus on love. Look for the good attributes in each and every person in your life. And honestly, this makes perfect sense because the more you focus on love, the more you see. The more love you see, the more love you experience. Why? Law of attraction. You get that which you focus on. Okay, finally, you have act as if your partner is here. Card number 37, which, yes, is a 10. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you so you will always consider them. For some, yes, there is someone coming in. A soulmate, someone from the past, someone from a past life. But again, law of attraction. Focus on that which you want, and that's what you will get. So act as if your partner is here. Why not? I guess you could say it's kind of like a fake it till you make it type of situation, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> if you resonate with that, then go ahead. I know there are some people that don't quite like that phrase, but hey, to each his own. All right, so we're going to close out the reading today with the Crystal Mandala deck. All right. Best message, please, spirit. Here we go. Your time to shine. Okay, and this is card number 33. So crazy, Ascended Master Helios and Citrine. I have been seeing 333 a lot lately, over the last two days. It's interesting, it's quite interesting. Okay, here we go. Your time to shine. We bring you the blessing of your time to shine. On the divine path, you gain empowerment through surrender and alignment with divine consciousness greater than your own. As you choose to surrender into higher consciousness through prayer and intention, you are held in a field of divine protection. You also gain strength, wisdom, underst and understanding. You release fear and gain love's power. You become increasingly radiant, discovering more of your own divine identity. At some point on your path, whilst this is always happening for you on the inner planes, you will be ready to perform a similar function on the outer planes in the world of forms. This is when you will be asked to bravely shine your light to help those in need, perhaps lost in darkness of some sort in the physical world. I'm gonna leave it there. There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a great Friday. I hope you have, if, if your day is coming to an end, I hope you had a fantastic day and you have a great evening. And I hope you guys have a really fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. I may be going live tomorrow. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'll post a poll and see what you guys think. But I was thinking of going live on Saturday. Um, and doing some readings, maybe some love readings or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll post a poll and you guys let me know what you would like to do for Saturday. Okay? Okay. Okay. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.